this section is about multiple regression. So remember in our previous example, when we used the temperature and fuel, or temperature to predict fuel consumption. If we had another variable, that might contribute even more information, and maybe we can make an even better prediction. So let's think of some other variables that might affect how much fuel is used, besides just the temperature outside. You could have things like what you set your thermostat at, or your filter condition, the efficiency of your furnace, if it's sunny or cloudy or rainy, because we all know that if it's cloudy outside at 50 degrees, it feels a lot different than if it's sunny outside at 50 degrees. So we decide to measure one such variable, which is the chill index called chill. A zero chill index means it's not cold, and a 30 chill index is very cold. So a higher chill actually means it feels colder. Chill index takes into account wind speed and cloud cover, etc. So we have our eight weeks that we had before, but before we only had temperature and the fuel consumption. Now we also have chill to add in. So we can look at scatter plots of both the temperature versus fuel and chill versus fuel. So here's temperature and fuel, and you can see it's a negative association, which makes sense as the temperature goes down, or as temperature goes up, the amount of fuel you need goes down. But for chill, as the chill goes up, remember chill actually makes it colder. So as it gets colder and colder, you need more fuel. So what happens to our fuel consumption as temperature increases? So as the temperature goes up, my fuel goes down. And what happens to the fuel consumption as chill increases? As it gets colder, my fuel goes up, so it increases. Notice that we could use either temperature to predict fuel, and there's the equation of my line, or I could use chill to predict fuel, and there's the equation of that line. So if we were to use temperature, just completely ignoring chill, and just do our normal linear regression, then our equation would be fuel equals negative 0.128 temperature plus 15.838. That's what we did in our previous section. And r squared equals 0.899. If we use chill and completely ignore the temperature, then my fuel would be 0.184 times chill plus 7.849, and r squared equals 0.758. So those are both okay models, and the r squared is very good for both of them. But temperature does have a slightly higher r squared value, so it is better. If you could only use one variable, use the temperature. But there's an even better way to do this than just using one variable we could try to use both variables at the same time to predict our fuel consumption. So this time we'll have two explanatory variables. So let's talk about a regression model for two variables, so if we have two x variables. Our basic model is y is going to equal to some intercept plus slope times my first x variable. Plus notice now I have a beta 2, this is a different slope from my second x variable, plus an error term. So this y equals, again, our intercept plus slope for our first x variable plus slope for our second x variable is our mean or average fuel consumption for all of our possible weeks, having temperature x1 and chill x2. Now, instead of a line, because we have now three variables, we have a plane in three-dimensional space. And our beta 0, beta 1, and beta 2 are our population parameters that we don't know yet. Or I should say, we never truly know because that's for our entire population. So beta naught is the intercept of the model. Notice I don't actually say the y-intercept anymore because we're in three dimensions, so it's just not called the y-intercept. This would be the mean or the average of the fuel consumption if both the temperature and chill are zero. Now remember, with y-intercepts, we said sometimes those don't actually have a logical interpretation. The same thing can be true for 
our three to, or our two x variables. Sometimes it has logical interpretation, sometimes it doesn't. Beta 1 is our slope in the x1 direction. What this means is it's the change in our mean fuel consumption associated with a one unit increase in our temperature x1 when the chill does not change. So this means if x1 goes up 1 and x2 stays the same, then y goes up blank. So that's what our slope for x1 tells us. And then for beta 2, that's the slope for our second variable. And it'll be the exact same thing just for chill instead. So it'll be the change in our mean fuel consumption if chill goes up 1 and the temperature does not change. So when we interpret the slope, we can only interpret it kind of one variable at a time. And again, epsilon is our error term. It describes the effect of y on y of all of our other factors other than x1 and x2. So other factors that could affect it could be our filter condition, how often we use our heater, our personal comfort levels, etc. We need the error term because the points will all be exactly on the plane. Just like before, the points weren't all exactly on our line. And the error term, the residual, is the difference between our observed value and our predicted value. Now, of course, we don't know what our population parameters are, so we have to estimate them using least squares again. Our prediction equation, we just say y hat is a little b, because it's for our sample, so b0 plus b1x1 plus b2x2. That's our least squares plane. So let's look at our megastat output. We want to find the equation of our least squares line. Notice I've circled the coefficients for us. So our equation is going to be our intercept of 13.1087 plus, or in our case, minus, because this next one's going to be minus, minus 0.09 times the temperature plus 0.0825 times the chill. I said y. Let's go ahead and just change it to our fuel because it makes more sense to do, when we do it in words, I think. So we can put a hat on to remind ourselves this is just our predicted value. So let's find B0 and interpret it. This is our intercept. Okay. So B0 equals this 13.1087. So this means if temperature equals 0 and chill equals 0, we predict a fuel consumption of 13.1087. Let's find B1 and interpret it. So this will be our slope for, okay, my first variable is temperature, so it'll be my slope for temperature. B1 is equal to this negative 0.09. So we'll say this is if our temperature, the, or our variable we're interested in, so temperature. So temperature goes up one degree, and here's the important part, and chill stays the same. We predict y, or our fuel, will go, now I was going to say up, but that's the negative, so we'll go down by 0.09 units. For B2, this will be our slope for chill. I will say B2 equals this 0.0825. So this means if temperature, go, sorry, not temperature anymore, now we're doing chill. So if chill goes up one degree, and temperature stays the same, we predict fuel will go up by 0.0825 units. 
So next, I want to know, are our slope coefficients for x1 and x2 the same as when we use just one predictor variable? So let's go up a couple pages to where we had those. So our previous slopes were negative 0.128 and 0.184. So let's see what they are now to compare that. So for our single models, we had our temperature slope was negative 0.128. Now it is negative 0.09. And for our chill, that one was before 0.184 and now it is 0.0825. So it did change quite a bit when we added in the two variables. Now that we've done that, the next thing to learn is how to predict our fuel consumption. So remember our predictive fuel Let's look at our equation again. So our equation again is fuel equals 13.1087 minus 0 0.09 times temperature plus 0 0.0825 times chill. So we'll just plug in temperature equals 57.8 and chill equals 16. So our predicted fuel, 13.1087 minus 0 0.09 times the temperature 57.8 plus 0 0.0825 times our chill of 16. Putting that into my calculator, I get 9.22. So that's my predictive fuel for a week with those conditions. Let's try it now. Oh, so this said the predictive fuel consumption for one specific week. Part 7 says find the mean or average for all the weeks that have those same conditions. No those are the exact same numbers. We don't have to do anything different. We still just say, well, my predictive fuel is still going to be 9.22. So it doesn't ask you, not if they ask you, just find the predicted value for one week or the average for all the weeks. You do the exact same thing. Okay, which is my note here. So the equation will tell you the predicted value for one week or the mean value for all the weeks with that set temperature and chill. Let's see, what was our actual fuel consumption for a week with temperature 57.8 and chill 16? So for that, we have to go back up to our original table. And we're looking for a temperature 57.8 and a chill of 16, so that was week 6, and my actual value was 9.5. So this was week 6, and actual temperature, or actual fuel, was 9.5. Now remember our formula for our residuals. Our residual is just our observed value minus predicted value, or y minus y hat. So let's find the residual for week six. So my residual equals my observed minus predicted so my actual, or my observed, is 9.5. The predicted one we got up here was 9.22. So this gives me 0.27 or 